Hello, and I find myself in the early stages of the book of Exodus today, chapter 2, verse 23, through to chapter 3, verse 20. It's quite a lot of text there. I might not read it all, but I've, I've been looking at it, and, and of course, it's a very famous passage, um, as, I, as I'll um, talk about in a minute. And it, but funnily enough, the last one of these um, reflections, which I recorded, I was back in uh, Genesis, in amongst all the shenanigans between Joseph and his brothers. And I can remember I was reflecting on um, on the part that popular culture plays in bringing some of these episodes from the Old Testament to people's awareness. In that case, it was Joseph, the show, the musical show, uh, Joseph and his technical dream coat. Um, and of course, those shenanigans, as I described them, between Joseph and his brothers, um, took the whole focus up to from, uh, from Canaan to Egypt. Because Joseph, of course, um, ended up in Egypt and then Jacob went to Egypt, his father. Uh, and it was this whole diversion. And we find ourselves now in Exodus trying to get out, <laughs> trying to get out of Egypt at a later stage because uh, God's people, the Israelites, became slaves in Egypt. And, um, and God uh, wanted to, to move them out there and back to the promised land. And so where I am today in Exodus... Um, is all about God um, alighting upon Moses as his chosen person to 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 bring about this this enormous logistical epic journey um, of of the people from Egypt to the Promised Land, a land of milk and honey, and of course, as we know, it's not Moses who completes that journey, but it's Moses who leads um, this band sometimes seemingly quite a difficult band of people. Um, so thinking about popular culture, of course, I can't read these these verses without thinking of a, an old an old film made a few years before I was born even, um, The Ten Commandments, uh, made by the director Cecil B. DeMille. And uh, those of you who, who are familiar with the film, he, he picked Charlton Heston uh, as Moses, a bearded Char Charlton Heston, uh, quite different to a lot of the roles that he had. And I think Yul Brenner was was the the pharaoh. Great stuff. I mean, th this is epic, isn't it? I mean, the, the history of God's people, um, you know, in, in Exodus, this whole uh, series of episodes and, and events, um, and it's all part of that journey, isn't it, of God trying to reconcile people to 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 His people to Himself, and and to get them uh, to get them settled. And um, the passage, the verses that I've been reading, I'll read the first few and maybe the, the last couple. Um, so years later, the king of Egypt died. But the Israelites were still groaning um, under their slavery and cried out for help. Their cry went up to God, who heard their groaning and remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. He saw the slavery of the Israelites and was concerned for them. So up to now then, yes, yeah, so it's all gone it's all gone a bit wrong in Egypt and um, the Israelites have become, um, you know, a persecuted people, I guess. And um, so this is why God, God feels the need to, um, to get them moving. And so the next beginning of verse 3 is about God calling Moses. Well, one day while Moses was taking care of the sheep and goats of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, he led the flock across the desert and came to Sinai, the holy mountain. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him as a flame coming from the middle of a bush. Moses saw that the bush was on fire, but that it was not burning up. This is strange, he thought. Why isn't the bush burning up? I will go closer and see. When the Lord saw that Moses was coming closer, he called to him from the middle of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. He answered, yes, here I am. God said, do not come any closer. Take off your sandals because you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. So Moses covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have seen how cruelly my people are being treated in Egypt. I have heard them cry out to be rescued from their slave drivers. 
I know all about their sufferings, and so I've come down to rescue them from the Egyptians and to bring them out of Egypt to a spacious land, one which is rich and fertile, and in which the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites now live. I have indeed heard the cry of my people, and I see how the Egyptians are oppressing them. Now I am sending you to the king of Egypt, so that you can lead my people out of his country. But Moses said to God, I am nobody. How can I go to the king and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Oh dear, I mean, I think Moses is put on the spot a bit here, isn't he? So he's heard the, the, the voice of God and seen this manifestation. It's interesting, actually. I think in the film, Charlton Heston <laughs> was the voice of God as well. I think. I might be wrong about that. But anyway, so Mo Moses is caught unawares. You know, who am I? I, I can't be doing this. Um, I'm nobody. And he just can't see how he's, he, he's going to, you know, he's going to go to the king of Egypt and, and pull this off. I mean, how's he going to do it? So carrying on, God answered, I will be with you. And when you bring the people out of Egypt, you will worship me on this mountain. That will be the proof that I have sent you. But Moses replied, when I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors sent me to you, they will ask me, what is his name? So what can I tell them? God said, I am who I am. This is what you must say to them. The one who is called I am has sent me to you. Tell the Israelites that I, the Lord, the God of their ancestors, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, have sent you to them. This is my name forever. This is what all future generations uh, are to call me. So there we are. Moses really put in the hot seat here. And, and um, he, he just can't imagine how he's going to, how he's going, how he's going to get this, this, this job done. And so what, uh, what God says to him towards the end of the passage, um, he says, I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless he is forced to do so, but I will use my power and will punish Egypt by doing terrifying things there. And after that, he will let you go. And we all, you know, are fairly familiar then with what God does to, to, uh, to punish the Egyptians. Um, and um, that comes up later in Exodus, doesn't it? Oh, what a passage. So this, this is, you know, such a big um, turning point, isn't it, in the history of God's people. And then thereafter, of course, Moses does, you know, do what he's been asked to do with his brother and his sister, Aaron and Miriam. And then off we go. And on this epic, epic journey with so many twists and turns in it so there we are charlton heston playing moses and the voice of god there we are that's uh, that says something about his status didn't it um yeah exodus whenever you come back to it it's always the the, the scale of it and, and the the gravity of it all never never um never diminishes does it thank you for listening